night. Yes, it was. And that was not a good weather night for City High for the kind of, uh, especially the offensive attack that they like to use. And uh, But I don't think that will be a factor tonight. If there's a factor tonight, it will be the wind. Well, if you've been here to see the beginning, yeah, there's nobody could keep their hand on the ball there for a while. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of surprise at the, the uniforms. Usually you can tell by the uniforms. The uniforms were not dirty. No, they weren't. It's not like any more than usual, you know. I guess they have a freshman game scheduled for tomorrow, some here, but it's called off. After week after week, knowing they're outclassed uh, everywhere they look on offense, defense, special teams, and they still give it their all, which, which you expect uh, good dedicated football players to do, but that's still got to be difficult for them to do that. Absolutely. One thing uh, that uh, Coach Sadler has mentioned in the, in the papers after each game is the kids have not given up. They show up every Friday night and uh, give it everything they got. Here's Andrew Schutz kickoff way back into the end zone, and uh, Mark Crawford is uh, not going to be able to return that. First and 10 for East at the 20. There was a pretty good example uh, just right there as to some of the problems East has. They're getting ready to kick off. Shut's about ready to approach the ball, and East only has 10 guys out yeah, there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And they have to quick run the uh, guy out there. Well, uh, Kwame Bevel is the quarterback. He's a junior. And if there's a bright spot, there's a lot of underclassmen starting on this East High team. Sophomore team won tonight. So there might be a little bright future going. Skill positions especially, yeah. East going from our left to our right. They split their backs as Bevel, the quarterback, comes up under center from the 20-yard line. Gets the snap, rolls to the near side, plants himself, fires its tipped, and falls uh, harmlessly to the ground. Uh, getting some penalty. Penetration uh, coming in there to get a tip, I believe, was number 66. Mm -hmm. That is uh, Josh Keppel. Josh Keppel gets the uh, the uh, breakup of the uh, pass, and uh, now it's second down 10. Yeah, Keppel came right up the middle, Kelly, and got by uh, the guy that was trying to block him and got his hand up. He looks like he's pretty good size, pretty tall, and got his hand up, knocked the ball down. Bevel actually is set up as a receiver to the near side now. He is not the quarterback on this play. There's the snap, there's the toss, it goes far side, and getting some penetration is the uh, uh, City High uh, defense as they come in to uh, make the uh, tackle. Stevenson all of a sudden became the quarterback and Bevel became a wide receiver. Uh, that was interesting, that's yeah. a new wrinkle. I'm not sure I've, uh, I've seen that this year from East Waterloo. Well, I saw Bevel, number seven, uh, come running towards the side, and I thought, well, gee, they're gonna change quarterbacks because here, then he sets up as a receiver, so I'm not sure where everybody's gonna play tonight. <laughs> Well, Coach Sadler said he's going to try and shake things up, and uh, he has nothing to lose. They've already lost seven consecutive games this year and uh, 43 in a row, and now Bevel's going to be a receiver to the near side, being uh, uh, guarded uh, down there uh, defensively by Phil Kenny. There's the uh, handoff in that backfield, and again, City High's not going to allow any kind of uh, penetration as East High gets dropped for no gain at the 18-yard line. That was... Uh Bevel was lined up out here as a split in that time, Kelly. We had a, a I formation in the backfield, and there was a pro set with a flanker on the left side and a split end on the right side, and Bevel was that split in. So we saw him at quarterback the first play, and it split in the next two. Well, the wind will be at the back of the uh, Trojan punter, and City High was going to get the ball in excellent field position. It's a couple of guys back deep at about the 50-yard line. Actually, Blank. Kelly, I think the wind's... You're right. You're yeah, right. It has changed. Thing. Yeah. Going to be at, at his back as the uh, punter in this particular case uh, is going to be a cruise mark. Cruise mark is going to get the kick. He keeps it low. It bounces to the 50. It's picked up there at the 50 yard line. Return near side spinning is Ryan Bohm, and Bohm is going to be stopped at the 39. But City Eye has great field position. Yeah, really good field position. That was a nice return. That was about a guy's about a 12, 13, 14 yard return right up the middle and, and puts him in great field position to start this football game. D.P. Iman, the player of the uh, week last week, the Derek Newton All-State Insurance player of the game and the loss to uh, Cedar Rapids Prairie, is going to come back out to uh, quarterback the uh, Little Hawks here in uh, game number eight. Uh, Little Hawks sitting at five and two on the season. There's the snap. There goes the handoff to Kenny. Kenny cuts inside his block, now goes back outside, and he's wide open. He's to the 30, he's to the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Phil Kenny, 39 yards, and City High is on the board. That was easy. That was really easy. Oh, uh, let's see. We had the right side there, the right side of the line, uh, Botembo. We had uh, Bill Hauer. Um, Guy said everybody just did a great job that time. He made a little cut to the inside and kicked it to the outside. We had a good block on the outside there, and I didn't catch that number, Kelly. I'm not sure who that was on the cornerback, and he ran around him like he was standing still, but all the way to the end zone on one 
play. Mm -hmm. Andrew Shutt is going to attempt to put the uh, uh, ball through the uprights, but just as the ball is snapped, we have a, a whistle, and uh, we apparently we didn't see a flag, but apparently something will happen there. And uh, Shutt's going to move back five yards to kick this one. I'll tell you, East has, uh, I saw some stats in the Waterloo paper the other night, and I, I should have cut them out, and I didn't. East High has given up something like 1,300 yards rushing this year in seven games, and by contrast, they only average 30 yards rushing themselves. They only have like 210 yards in rushing. Kenny already has 39 yards in just the one play. Yeah, they like to throw. They throw a lot more than they, than they do run. They're really small up front, and that's hurt them all year long. Here's Andrew Schutz PAT attempt. That is going to be good. 7-0 City High has the lead. Don't go away. Kickoff coming up on 1630 KCJJ. We're going to have the mercy rule here real quick tonight, I think. Except he can't do it. These numbers are hard to read on the side. Mm -hmm. See, I think the wind's coming this way, Kelvin. It's kind of coming from across, kind of coming from the corner this way. Watching the, uh, watch the flag, this one goes all the way into the end zone again, and uh, East High will have a first and 10 on the 20. It looks like the flag, well, now it is kind of swirling. It's coming towards us now, isn't it? A little bit towards us. Yeah. Kind of out of the southeast more, I think. Yeah. Well, East High is going to have to throw uh, into a crosswind as they bring the quarterback, Ryan Stevenson. Now, Stevenson is a junior. Wambi Bevel is also a junior. Bevel was given uh, uh, to us as a quarterback, but he is now in the slot to the near side. Pro set in the backfield, receiver to the top of the formation. East getting the snap. Stevenson will get it from center. He will turn. He will fake. Uh, no, he'll give the uh, uh, pass in the air, and it's going to be incomplete. He faked the handoff, went to the far side, tried to hit his receiver over there, but it goes incomplete. Yeah, it was a classic bootleg. You fake uh, trap to the fullback up the middle. You fake sweep to the tailback going around the right side. The quarterback boots it to the left. The split end on that side does a flag route or a corner route. Got a tight end coming across in the drag. Iowa City High did a real nice job of picking things up and uh, and uh, no completion. Play is brought in by Tim Klinghammer, near side. He will be setting up as a receiver for the uh, Trojans of Waterloo East. Incomplete on the pass, it is second down. Twins to the top of the formation, twins to the bottom of the formation. I set in the backfield for Stevenson, the quarterback. Passes far side, it is a diving attempt, but it's gonna fall incomplete. Klinghammer, the one it was intended to, to uh, go to, but it falls incomplete. Just a quick hitch, he did uh, two steps, turned around, and the ball was on its way, but it was thrown low, and he couldn't come up with it. Well, Cedar Falls has qualified for the playoffs. A number of teams have. City High will qualify tonight. Regina has the week off. They could qualify next week, and we're going to be doing that game as well. Peking at Regina next week. We'll be on the air about 10 minutes of 7 on Friday. We'll make sure we get there in time this time. Last time we were at Regina, got there a little late. Here's the uh, quarterback, third down and 10. Stevenson from the shotgun. Looks to the near side to pass. Plants himself, fires, looking for a receiver, and it's incomplete. There's uh, Kwame Bevel, the uh, receiver, or the quarterback turned receiver, and it falls incomplete. I'll tell you, that was not a badly thrown ball. That was just a fly route by, uh, by Bevel at the split end over here on our side, on the near side of the field. And uh, it actually was overthrown. It was over his head. But that wind, Kelly, that mm. thing pushed it out of bounds. And even if he caught it, yeah, he would have been out of bounds, but it really uh, was not a badly thrown ball. Well, it's nice to see the stat man get here. He just flew in from St. Louis. Uh, stats by Rollo is uh, is here, and uh, let's see if we can uh, get caught up. No score here with, uh, or excuse me, 7 nothing City High with 9.56 left to play in this uh, first period. Another low kick is going to bounce. City High is going to uh, pick it up at the 44-yard uh, line and immediately be uh, dropped there as uh, again Ryan Bohm and it's first and 10 City High again Dick they're at the 46 yard line mm, yeah great field position again I'll tell you what uh, when you start your offense at the beginning of the game if you can be on the opponent's side of the 50 yard line you got things going in your favor well how many broadcast crews across the state can say that uh, their guy just uh, flew in from St. Louis watching the Cardinals and the Astros but he just now got here didn't leave till like 4 o'clock this afternoon. I'll tell you, his arms are tired. Here comes the quarterback back to pass his Iman back oh, to the far step. side, and it's incomplete. He was looking down the far sideline for a receiver, and it just could not get to Brent Jen. Brent Jen was, was uh, he had about two, two and a half steps on that cornerback on that side, Kelly. It was just a fly route, and he was split out on the right side, and um, 
Iman uh, threw it up in the air. I think the wind caught that. It looked like it kind of took off when it got up in the air, so he overthrew him. Iman will uh, set up again in the shotgun. There's 9.42 left to play in the first period. The 39-yard uh, run by uh, Kenny getting uh, City High on the board. This is only their third snap of the ball game. Iman passing down the middle and it is caught. On the middle of the field oh, to the right 30, to the 25, to the 20, 15, 10, inside the 10, inside the five-yard line. That's boom, and it's going to be first and goal for City High. Well, he came out of the backfield and just caught it right over the, looked like right over the center, about five yards deep from the line of scrimmage and just took off like a bullet and uh, ran through a couple of defenders, but uh, the guy, had, the guy, uh, the uh, cornerback on the far side had the angle on him and caught him inside the five yard line. Now, there's not a lot of bodies on that sideline. They can't afford to lose anybody. That's exactly, I think I counted 25 warming up before the game started killing, wow. so you're right. Here comes Iman. he has him first and goal. There's the handoff, Kenny gets it, and Kenny bursts through, dies, Touchdown. and it's gonna be one guy didn't call it to the other one. Yep, the guy on the far sideline did as Kenny bounces in and gets a four yard touchdown run. So Kenny now has a couple of touchdowns here in the first period and uh, City High has scored twice. Well, Kenny is going to uh, mount up some yardage and, uh, unless uh, Coach Sabres doesn't use him for a good chunk of the game, it's just gonna be uh, a little one-sided uh, here this evening. Here's Andrew Schutt's PAT attempt. It kind of bounces to the holder. He puts it up and it is good. 14-0 City. We'll be back on 1630 KCJJ. I am corporate jet. I do. I do. I got Mark Hansen because uh, I didn't know if you're going to be here or not. Holy cow. And another kickoff into the end zone, which we've seen from West, we've seen from Regina, we've seen here from City High all season long. First and 10 East on the 20, and they haven't moved off of there. I don't think they've gotten past the 20 yet. We haven't been, uh, we've been, you know, all the football has been played on the left side of the 50 yard yep. line. Yep, it has, it's 14 nothing. City High has the lead. Little Hawk defense seeing that they can stop uh, Ryan Stevenson, he is the quarterback. He comes up under center this time. Pro set in the backfield, slot to the near side. Stevenson on the trap play, and this one is going to, uh, actually it's gonna pick up some yardage as the uh, fullback, which I believe is Jared Close. Let's see who comes up at the uh, bottom of the field. Yep, that's uh, Jared Close. Normally a defensive lineman, but he made him into a fullback. And he'll get to three yards to the 23. Kind of uh, like uh, Alex Canella, trying to make an Alex Canella's out of him. <laughs> as uh, Jared Close picks up three yards. So that's the most uh, that East High has been able to uh, to get so far. Anthony Weekly checks in with the play. We're not sure how big he is, Kelly, because we didn't weren't given any kind of uh, measurements on, hmm. the, on the East Waterloo football kids. But he looks huh. like a big, big young man. He's a sophomore. They're uh, making a fullback out of him tonight. There's Stevenson on the handoff. It comes near side and trying to turn the corner and not quite getting it done is Mark Crawford. And Crawford does sting in bounds. He is dropped near side by Dorian Davis at about the 26 or so, I guess about 27. Well, Crawford's number is 83. And I know Crawford has had several touchdown passes this year, Cot. And my guess is that uh, he normally is at a split end or a flanker back position, but the Playing in that tailback at, at East High and trying to get things grow, going again. And he'll get it going. He just needs to be given some time. They're really small. They just aren't very big up in the line. East always has skilled kids. But uh, they got to develop some big little linemen to do some blocking for them. KCJJ, Iowa City, your station. It is now third down and about two. East High at the 27, 28-yard line in their own territory. And uh, the tight end jumps offside. So we're going to have a five-yard penalty back to the 22 on the uh, Trojans. Well, uh, this broadcast is brought to you in part by King's Auto Repair and the Cat Clinic, both of them combining to bring you high school football and the mighty Double J. So we mentioned stats by Rollo uh, sending the entire company, what a boss, sending his entire company down to St. Louis to Bush Stadium to watch the Cardinals and the uh, Houston Astros play. Now, wait a minute. I did. I don't think I got an invitation to that. No, uh, we we got to quit. So we got to we got to find a new job, Dick. We got to work for Stats by Rollo. <laughs> Stats by Rollo out of Cedar Falls is just uh, what a tremendous ball. He's boss of the year, I think. I set in the backfield for Stevenson, the quarterback has it to gets a toss to Crawford. Crawford got that burst of speed, but it's all sideways, and the little Hawks should catch up with him and bring him down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I tell you what, there was a little bit of a hole there early, but boy, the the uh, little Hawks closed it up real quick and did a nice job of converging to the ball. 
Well, now the uh, punting unit comes back out again. C.J. Cruzmark, whose uh, mother was up here earlier, making sure that we knew that his son, her son had a uniform change, uh, number change. So we wanted to make sure we got the right credit for C.J. Cruzmark, who normally is, uh, well, I don't know what his old number was, but it's 89 tonight. Those moms, they, 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 <laughs> uh, they make sure that you know those numbers. Yes, they do. They <laughs> want to make sure that everybody in Iowa City knows that C.J. Cruzmark is punting. Now, he's kept his punts low to this point because of the wind. <laughs> blowing as you might be able to hear it blow into the press box. See, it kind of uh, drops the uh, snap. This time the punt goes up and just kind of dies, bounces, takes an East High bounce, bounces across the 50, and it's going to be down to the 46. So East High gets a break there as City High takes over first and 10 on the 46-yard line. Kelly Niff along with Dick Miller from Waterloo's Memorial Stadium. Two things there, Kelly. I noticed it, uh, both the last two times East has punted, City High has had a uh, return on both times, which means they don't have uh, they don't have people going in for the block. Maybe one or two, but not uh, not the whole team. And if Coach Sabers is watching that, that time the ball kind of trickled back. The, the time before it kind of trickled back, and it looks to me like if they get a punt rush on, they might be able to get one here tonight, especially when the kicker's kicking into that wind. I set in the backfield as the handoff goes to Davis. He powers his way across the 50-yard line, is tripped and brought down at the Water Louise 48. It's a pickup of six for the junior a tailback or halfback, Dorian Davis. Davis gets it to, into East High territory, and it's second down four, a long four to go. Kelly Neff along with uh, Dick Miller here at Waterloo's Memorial Stadium. One more game in the regular season than the playoffs begin. There's another on the trap play. Dorian Davis gets it again. Boy, and he just carries some people with him. Just nobody can grab him until they finally bring him down at the 40. You know, that they, they had that touchdown run in the very first play of the first series. The second series, City High came out and wanted to throw the ball, and I'm sure the thinking there is to throw that ball while they had the win at their mm. back. And But I'll tell you, Kelly, all they need to do is keep it on the ground because every time they... Uh, they uh, run the ball they crank out a bunch of yards he's the rushing defense uh I don't know if it's the worst in the league, but it is certainly uh, down there towards the bottom. There's the handoff, and it goes to Kenny. This time they grab him around the waist, but he's just strong enough to carry them and carry them and carry them. Andrew, or Anthony, weakly drops him at the 33-yard line. Uh, had a nice hole on the left side by Alex Berg and Ryan Duffy. Opened up a nice hole. He grabbed both arms around that ball and just put his head down and, and uh, picked up six, seven yards. And the uh, receiver, uh, Ben Evans, will flank out to the top of the formation. I set in the backfield with Davis and Kenny. Kenny has a couple of touchdowns already as City High leads it 14 0, 5 40. Left to play in the first period, and apparently too much time has been taken. It is going to be, no, it's going to be a legal procedure against City High. So the ball will be placed back at the 38. I didn't see what that was. It must have been moving in the backfield because that's the. Uh that's where the flag came from. You would have seen everything if you had been there last week at the Prairie, Dick. You would have seen two uh, backs in motion at the same time, four wide receivers offside at the same time, just all kinds of things for the first 41 minutes, just nothing went right. Must have been different this last seven, though. Huh? Yes. Here's Iman. Iman's going to keep it itself to the 30, oh. to the 25-20. Got a sting in bounds. He's inside the 15 and is out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Oh, uh, Kelly, that was a nice run. Iman showed me some speed there. That's uh, He's got some athletic ability. That was a nice run. 29 run, or yard run for D.P. Iman. Yeah, the last week, uh, Brad and I kind of, you know, we're going to go warm up the car in that uh, fourth period. I told him, go warm up the car. He's this thing's over. Then all of a sudden they caught fire. Three touchdowns in seven minutes. Wow. Two in the last minute and a half. I set in the backfield as City High uh, trying to come back from that uh, loss. And they lead 14-0 against Waterloo East here. Here's Kenny. Kenny near side. Kenny's going to run in. Kenny's going to go in untouched for his third touchdown of the ball game. This one from 10 yards out as Phil Kenny scores again for the Little Hawks, who have had the ball three times and have scored each time they've had the ball. That was a nice, nice run. Big hole again. Oh, right over Alex Berg that time on the left side. And, and uh, again, he put both arms around the ball and just didn't stop till he got in the end zone. I'm not sure he got touched, actually. Andrew Shutt is going to attempt another PAT as the City High Little Hawks have uh, had things go their way so far, and it continues here. 21-0 with the PAT. We'll be back on 1630 KCJJ. So, uh, did you get uh, good tickets? Mm -hmm. How much you have to pay? Back at a lighter wallet, though. Yeah. <laughs> See, Rollo doesn't drive, so he doesn't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about parking places.
a returnable kickoff uh, from the five yard line to the 15 yard line. Crawford has just stopped in his tracks, just like he hit a big uh, brick wall. Uh, uh, City High uh, defensive is uh, Messiah, uh, Messiah Tutson. He is going to make the tackle at the 15 yard line. That was a big hit, boy. He caught him just right when he's just before he tried to make a cut, and he was at a dead stop, and he uh, put him flat in his back. Well, the uh, Cedar Falls Tigers won last night to uh, beat the big senior uh, 49 to 21, something like that. So they've set up their half of the uh, uh, matchup for next week against Prairie. Prairie, it's a 7 0, and uh, they're playing tonight. Uh, for the right to go into the Unidome next uh, Friday for what will probably be the highlight game of the state, two eight-no teams. Here's the snap, Stevenson will uh, give the handoff. No, he's gonna give it off to uh, to uh, Bevel. Bevel's gonna run into a little trouble. Bevel's gonna be swarm tackled by everybody on that city high uh, defense and be brought down for a three yard loss. Big time broken play. It was gonna be the split in reverse going around, uh, starting from the right side, going to the left side, Kelly. And he just flat ran into the quarterback or the quarterback ran into him, but both of them came to a dead start stop of course they gave time for the little hawks to catch up to him the defense catch up to him and uh, he was lucky to get what he got actually Kwame Bevel with a uh, three yard loss and I'm not sure who you credit the tackle on that one everybody kind of uh, helped out on that so now with Crawford in the backfield actually they uh, have an eye set in the backfield with Jared close the fullback the quarterback is Ryan Stevenson it is second down and 13, and the handoff goes to Crawford. He just can't get to going. He does uh, shuffle his feet and get to stay on his feet and get to the 16, though. Got got over the, uh, yeah, he got over the 15-yard line. He picked up about five, six yards. Not a bad run. That was, that was probably their biggest yardage gain of the night so far. It'll be third down, still third and long, about nine yards to go for the Trojans. City High leading it 21 to nothing with 3.54 left to play in the first period. Kelden up along with uh, Dick Miller and uh, apparently the world's number one baseball fan Rollo is here. He went to Chicago to watch the Cubs in the last weekend. Saw the Twins play uh, the Yankees in the Metrodome. He saw the Cardinals play the Astros at St. Louis. And he'll probably be gone next week too. Here's the handoff uh, up the middle and uh, nothing will go there. As uh, back to the 16 yard line goes the ball carrier and that is it. Now we're going to have to punt here Kelly. Let's see if they put the rush on this time. East will be punting for the fourth time in four possessions. C.J. Cruzmark will be putting a toe to it. And again, City High, who got to possession on the first punt at the 39, second punt at the 46, third punt across the 50 at the 46. So they've had two of the three uh, uh, series that they've done so far uh, has become on East, or started on East High's uh, side of the field. So Cruz Mark is going to punt the ball away again as he steps back at about the five yard line and is ready, gets the snap, tries to uh, get the kickoff straight up. I mean straight up. It bounces at the, well, it bounces out of bounds inside the 30. Now he kicked it from the 16. The official's going to walk it off. This is always an interesting call. And he marches inside the 30 and he marches to the 28. So it is going to be a 12 yard punt. City Guy has it first and 10. Now again, for what, about the fourth time, City High has had great field position going in. And uh, gosh, as an offensive coordinator calling plays, it makes it so much easier when you start from, from this end of the field. Ball on the 29, actually, is where the official is going to place it. First and 10 for D.P. Iman, the quarterback for the City High Little Hawks, who lead it 21. No, excuse me, they have a new quarterback. This is Keaton Jones right down the middle, and he underthrows Brett Jen. So Keaton Jones is now quarterbacking the uh, uh, Little Hawks and uh, throws his first pass incomplete. Keep that point up, young man. He had the point down, and it just took a dive and hit the ground in front of the receiver. He was open to the inside. It was a slant route, deep slant route to the inside post pattern possibly. And uh, it might have been a touchdown if he could have got it to him. Well, Phil Kenny is still in there for the uh, Little Hawks. Sean Hosini is uh, also in there in that backfield. In fact, he's the slot man to the near side. Receiver Ben Evans to the bottom of the formation as the quarterback Keaton Jones gets it. Hands off to Kenny, side steps one man. He's to the 25, cuts it back into the 20. He's to the 15, he's to the 10, five. Guess what? Phil Kenny is in for his fourth touchdown of the first period. This one from 29 yards out. Went to that right side again. That seems to be the favorite side for those long touchdowns run, runs, Kelly, on the uh, right over the right tackle, and that was uh, Nico Botempi. Botempi. Yep. As, uh, that's four touchdowns now for uh, Phil Kennedy, who's doing his impersonation of Jerry Moses here uh, tonight. Jerry, of course, a 
famed football player in the years gone past for Water Louise. Andrew Shent with the PAT. That kick is up. That kick is good. 28 0 City High. We'll be back on 1630 KCJJ. Well, we'll be home for the 10 o'clock news. Hell, if this was in Iowa City, we'd be home for the 10 o'clock. <laughs> we, could, we could stop and have dinner and be yeah. home for the 10 o'clock. <laughs> oh. Poor East. Yeah. No. <laughs> if he has, he's gone to the end zone more times he's been tackled. Well, let's see, City High, uh, actually their last possession before that had to run five or six plays before they scored. Their first possession, they ran one play and scored. Second possession, they ran two plays and scored. Last possession, they ran one play and scored. It is 28 uh, nothing. City High leads it. The kickoff goes into the end zone. And uh, now Ryan Stevenson will lead this Trojan team uh, back to the 20-yard line with twin receivers to the top and bottom of the formation. As the black and orange uh, now goes back to pass. Stevenson to the near side. He underthrows his receiver intended for Anthony Weekly. And it's, it's hard to tell. I mean, last week at Prairie, I didn't know it was as windy as it was. That explains the, some of the passes and how they went. It might be the same case tonight. Yeah, I really think it is. I think you're getting a swirling wind down there. It seems to be coming uh, kind of out of the east, southeast, which makes it coming across the field somewhat. And I think it uh, definitely, anytime that ball's been thrown either team, it looks like it's been affected by it. Tim Klinghammer comes into the ball game. He is a wide receiver for the Trojans as he uh, brings the play in. Uh, Kwambi Bevel uh, listed as the starting quarterback, but is not a quarterback. It hasn't been. Here's Stevenson back to pass, looking near side, and he throws it past to Josh Way, the receiver to the near side, incomplete again. I'll tell you what, Josh Keppel was in there again that time, Kelly. He didn't uh, He didn't get a tackle on the quarterback, but he had his hands up, and, and uh, uh, the quarterback threw it high. It was way over the top of the receiver, so I'm sure Keppel had an effect on him. It's illegal procedure against the Trojans. It might be declined, and it is, which sets up third down and 10. Ball still at the 20-yard line. Got a, uh, a special guest at halftime we'll tell you about. Uh, well, it's still in bottom right now. A, a good friend of yours and uh, someone familiar to City High people going to be our guest. Uh, you bet. Mark Hansen, the principal at City High. Coached with Mark and taught with Mark at West High and Waterloo for a lot of years before he left town. and. Uh, became the principal in Burlington first, I guess, mm -hmm. and then City High. Sitting with his dad right in front of us here, and he's going to be here at halftime. Out of the shotgun, Stevenson to the near side, just oh, as he's gosh. hit. He lets loose of it, and it's intercepted at the 38-yard line. That's Ben Evans from the 38 to the 20 to the 15, 10. He stepped out of bounds, I believe. Yep, he stepped out of bounds inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. Did you catch who it was that hit the I quarterback? I sure did. I'll tell you, you can give that uh, interception to Nico Botembo. That Ooh. He just flat-out leveled the quarterback. The quarterback right now, East Waterloo's quarterback, I'm not sure he knows wow. where he's at. Well, he's kind of wandering around out in the middle of the field trying to decide which sideline to go to. He that's, just nailed him, Kelly. That's one of those things where the coach goes out and says, how many fingers do I have up? And the kid says, Thursday. <laughs> he's still wandering <laughs> he, around. Boy, he, that was a hit. That was it? a great hit. And it was all legal, believe me, but it was a great hit. Well, there's a flag back here at the 42-yard line. Apparently, it's going to go against City High. And uh, so that uh, great interception run back by Ben Evans, even though it will go as an interception, will uh, bring the ball back from the seven. The point of the foul is the 42, and we have a hold against City High on the run back. So it'll be first and 10 for the Little Hawks, who have four touchdowns, six first downs total, and they have uh, the ball back again. And I'm not sure I've ever seen a team score five touchdowns in one quarter. You know, this is the longest quarter I've ever seen. We still have two minutes and 15 seconds to go. And the other incredible thing about this, the whole first quarter has been on, well, <laughs> been on the side penalty, of the field. Till that penalty. It's all been on this side of the 50. Sure has. But now the ball's back at the 47-yard line. First and 10, City High. Iman back in a quarterback. Plants himself just before he's hit, he passes. Complete to Kenny to the 30, to the 15, to the 10, five touchdown again for the Little Hawks. And again, it is Kenny, and he has five touchdowns in the first period. Iman has tried three, maybe four times to go over the middle, deep middle, and because uh, obviously they've seen something there. The coaches have seen something there that they uh, are trying to get the ball right over the middle, deep middle, and they really nailed that one. That was a great pass hit him right on stride and then just an easy run to the end zone. 
2.08 left to play in this first period. Iman, a 53-yard pass to Phil Kenny, and Shunt is going to attempt to make the PAT, and he does. 35-0 City High will be back on 16.30. KCJJ. Well, we've got to explain the 35-point rule now again. Do you have that? Do you well, have that article? yeah. Somewhere. Thirty-five nothing. City High leads at 2:08 left to play. First period. Here is the uh, kickoff by Andrew Shutt, and this one nice. will uh, be into the end zone. No, it's no. going to be touched by Crawford. He picks it up at the one, returns it to the five, trips over his own man, returns it. He's still on his feet. He goes to the 15. He goes across the 15 to the 18-yard line. East first and ten, and Dick, we've been talking about the 35-point rule all season long. This is the first time we've really had to talk about it this early in the game. Yeah. Uh, the 35-point rule, when a team gets ahead by 35 or more, the clock never stops, except for various things like timeouts or injuries. But that only happens in the second half. Starts in the second half. So it's 35 nothing now, but the 35-point rule never takes effect until the second half of a game. So we still have the whole second quarter to go. R uh, Kelly, that's the first time he had kicked it in the end zone. The reason was he slipped and fell when oh. he kicked. So maybe that field is a little slippery out there. I think it still is from that sophomore game. Twins to the top, twins to the bottom. Stevenson rolls to the near side, fires it. It's incomplete off the fingertips of uh, Kwambe Bevel. You know, uh, Bubba, the uh, film guy for uh, for City High, uh, came down. He thought, and I, I mentioned it at that uh, start of that touchdown pass to Kenny, how D.P. Iman hauled in there. He had a guy coming at him from both sides, and he just held his ground. Yeah, that was a great, that was a great pass. It was right on the money. He, he didn't break stride at all. And uh, with the score 35 nothing, there's a minute 55 left to play in this first period. This broadcast tonight brought to you in part by the Okaboji Grill and King's Material, combining to bring you high school football on the mighty Double J. That last play, Kelly, Bevel curled up uh, on oh, about 10 yards, and the ball hit him right in the hands, and he, uh, he, he dropped the ball. And apparently we have a delay of game. He's took a long time in that huddle, so they're going to be uh, sent back to the 13-yard uh, line. Kelly Neff along with Dick Miller. One more game, and we've changed the schedule for next week. We're going to do Pekin at Regina instead of uh, West High at Xavier because it has playoff implications. And I know Brad Cross and Rollo will love it because Regina gives us free chicken sandwiches and West High doesn't. So we're uh, going to uh, go to Regina next uh, Friday night. After the penalty is marched off, here comes Stevenson, the quarterback, dropping back to pass, passes near side. He has Bevel. Did he catch it? No, he uh, was fully extended on the near sidelines, but he, he could not come up with it. It goes incomplete. Yeah, it was a good effort by Bevel. He gave it everything he got to catch the ball, but he uh, was extended and ended, actually ended up falling out of bounds. So even if he caught it, I don't think it would have counted. Not a lot of people here uh, didn't uh, brave the... Uh, uh, bad weather to uh, come out here to uh, watch tonight's game. City High uh, folks are actually, that's a very small crowd by comparison. And uh, the folks that are here from City High are enjoying it. And it's 35 nothing with a minute and 48 seconds left to go in the first period. Kelly Neff along with uh, Dick Miller and uh, Craig Falsgraf is the quarterback. Uh, Ryan Stevenson uh, gets the snap. Pass, pumps once, pumps twice, and oh, there's a massive hit on Josh Way. He was the intended receiver, and that was Dorian Davis that came over and smacked him pretty good. Kelly, that was a big time hit. He just flat out, the East High receiver was doing a, a, a quick slant to the inside. He was looking inside for the Kelly to carry that thought even a little bit further. The, they've combined their freshman and sophomore, so they don't have a freshman football team. They uh -huh. have their freshman on the sophomore football team, and, and that doesn't help the program. Nope. Here comes the uh, East High offensive line, fourth down and a bunch. So City High is going to get it back again as East punts for the fifth time in the first period. High kick, and it's going to bounce at the uh, 20, 35 and then uh, be picked up right there at the 35-yard line and return to the 34, and City High has it again, first and 10 on the East 34. This broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Derek Newton Allstate Insurance, who will name the player of the game. And gee, you know, uh, I hate to jump the gun, but I mean, Phil Kenny scored five touchdowns already. It might be an easy choice tonight as to who's going to be the player of the game. Five touchdowns in the first quarter. Yeah, we that's, still have a minute and a half to go. That's amazing. I don't think any of City High's possessions to this point have lasted a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. And uh, the quarterback, and we can have the new one, here is Keaton Jones, who is in there to quarterback this uh, team. 
Back to pass, throws near side, and it's incomplete. Actually uh, uh, broken up by Anthony Weekly, one of the safeties for the Trojans, and it goes incomplete. And brings up second down, 10 yards to go. Another pass deep over the middle. They really like something there. I have a, uh, I've have i got to watch the East and see what they're playing. They might be in a cover two, and if they're in a cover two, they've got those safety split to either side, so that open, that middle should be open in that situation. You know, with Halloween coming up, I kind of like the uniforms. They're orange and black. It uh, kind of looks like pumpkins, you know? It, it's, uh, the, uh, they're being carved up, I'll tell you right now. Here's the handoff near side, and it's going to go to the 30, to the 25, inside the 25, to the 20-yard line goes uh, Ryan Bohm as he picks up yardage to about the, or just shy of the 20-yard uh, uh, line. At least I think that was a Bohm. Let's, uh, Yep, that is Ryan Bohm, yeah. and he picks up a first and ten. Yeah, that was a great run. I'll tell you, he really finished it off nice, Kelly. He put his head down, ran right over the top of one of the East Waterloo defensive backs. Great run. Running 13 yards for Bohm, and now uh, James, or uh, the Keaton Jones, uh, looks over to the sideline. This coach is saying, then he looks on his wrist. He has the plays written on his wrist, and he comes up to uh, uh, go into shotgun formation. He has uh, Dorian Davis in the slot. You have Ryan Bohm in the back. He only rolls to pass. Does uh, Jones passes low? and uh, bounced into the hands of Mike McCoo. Intercepted. Oh, yeah, they say it is an interception. So East Mike McCoo intercepts the pass. I wasn't sure it didn't bounce into his arms, but they say it's going to be intercepted by McCoo, and it's first and ten for the Trojans. That was kind of an interesting call. The official that said he uh, that he intercepted that was clear over on this outside, and I just uh, it's hard for me to believe he could actually see him catch that ball because it was that low. He really... Uh, really trapped it. Well, McCoo, that's a, a, a familiar name among East High Athletics as there's been a number of uh, McCoos that have played uh, in recent years, basketball as well. East High's got an excellent basketball program. Here's Stevenson and the officials said maybe they took too much time again. That is going to be, uh, no, it's going to be a legal procedure, a five-yard penalty back to the 16th. I saw Steve McGraw. I went down there to get something to eat earlier, and uh, he's, of course, the basketball coach, boys basketball coach at Juan of the East. And, you know, as low as the football program is now, the basketball program is, like, at the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, it sure is. You know, I'm surprised McGraw's here. It's awful cold and windy for him to be out. Know. Like, now, he's used to those warm gyms. He's kind of a wimp, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it's first and 15. As the uh, quarterback, as Stevenson, drops back into the end zone to pass, passes far side, and it's caught, and then a drop immediately as Mark Crawford out of the backfield gets tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it was a good pass, a good good reception, but uh, uh, who was that out there? Oh, uh, As far as defense goes? Yeah, 32. That was uh, Dorian Davis. Dorian Davis. Did a great, he was right on top of him as soon as he caught the ball, and that's why there wasn't any game. I talked to Steve McGraw, and he said he's on duty tonight. Uh, oh, no, I asked him, I said, are you on duty? He says, I'm not important until November. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said nothing until November. Yeah, it sounds like a comment. Yes, yeah, it does. Second down and 15, 14 yards to go as the quarterback, uh, Stevenson, drops back to pass, being uh, flushed out of the pocket and being tackled at the one-yard line. Good, good presence by him, knowing where he's at. He saw he was in the end zone. There wasn't anybody open, so he turned on the Jets and at least got across the goal line, so it wasn't a safety. And that is uh, Josh Keppel making the tackle, and it's going to be at the one as the quarter ends. 35 nothing City High will be back. Now, that's in a whole hour for one quarter. That's incredible. Plus, we have halftime as parents' night. We could be here till tomorrow. Of course, in the second half, if it stays like this, the clock will continue to run. But now we have to turn a little. This is the first yeah. time we've had to turn and look at the other end of the field. It's kind of good to see him at the other end there for a change. Yeah, we're getting to wonder people down there wondering if they're ever going to get the play in front of him. At the one-yard line, back to pass goes Stevenson. He passes near side, intercepted. At the 25-yard line by Evans, he returns it to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Evans spins and gets oh, to about the up. Touchdown. That is going to be yep. It's going to be a touchdown. A 25 or 24 yard interception return for Ben Evans. That was a nice interception. He really played that well. He, he was uh, uh, to the outside of the receiver and stepped in front of him and uh, just took off way over to the far side, picked up a couple blockers and got in the end zone. Nice catch, nice run. I thought he was stopped short, but the official says, no, nope, he's in there. An INT for Ben Evans, and that is his second interception of the night. So he's in the running for player of the game as well and now Shunt is going to attempt the PAT and it is good it is 42 to nothing City High we'll be back at 1630 KCJJ I guess 24 yeah that's what I thought it was 24 was it further back than that 
What are you going to call it? Susan, what do you call it? Yeah, we'll go with you. What do you say? 30? Okay. I thought it was 24, but... Lights? It's over. Yeah, that one's not going the end zone. Huh? Michael McCoo is going to return this uh, uh, kickoff to about the 24-yard line. East High has it first and 10. Well, Susan Harmon of the Press Citizen said it went 30 yards. We said it went 24, so we are going to uh, just, uh, you know, what do the math teachers say? You just split it right down the middle. It's right a 27-yard interception Sounds return. Good. Stats first period. 239 yards in total offense for City High, negative two for Water the East. Water the East has had five more snaps, 20 snaps for negative two. City High, 15 snaps for 239 yards, including 144 on the ground. Kenny with the four rushing touchdowns and one receiving touchdown. Here comes Stevenson, the quarterback under center now for the Trojans of Water the East. Gets the ball, hands off uh, uh, to Nope, he keeps it himself. He fires near side. It's tipped uh, again to Dorian Davis. No, that's not Dorian Davis. That is uh, somebody new 30, on defense. 37. That's Justin right? Kleingartner. Well, uh, the rest of the stats, uh, Kenny, five carries, 88 yards. Davis, two carries, 14 yards. Iman, one carry, 29. Boehm, one carry, 13. Nine rushes for 144 yards. East has uh, Crawford, four carries, six yards. Gann, one carry, negative two. Close, two carries, three. Bevel, one carry, negative three. Stevenson, one carry, negative seven. Nine carries, negative three. Stevenson, one of 11 in passes uh, uh, for uh, uh, one yard total and one interception. I'm in two of three, Jones 0 of three in passing, 95 yards in passing offense for City High. There's Crawford, Crawford's gonna be hit and he's gonna be dropped back at the 20 yard line for a loss of four on the play. Well, I think, you know, Kelly, I'd like to think that uh, City High's playing really, really good defense and I think they are, but uh, boy, it's just the East Waterloo does not have much of an offense at all right now. As the uh, Little Hawks, so I guess one of those interceptions was in the second period, uh, Ben Evans, I was just, chastising uh, stats by Rollo for only giving Evans one uh, interception, but I guess one came in the second period. And the ball at the 20-yard line, it is uh, second down, it is third down. Third down and about 14 yards to go. Of course, Craig has jet lag, so the st stats might not be quite accurate tonight. Here comes Stevenson, the quarterback, back to pass. He passes, nice uh, catch by uh, Bevel. Bevel has some running room. Bevel still on his feet, gets across the 30, find of the 36, Dick. Yeah, that, I'll tell you what, they, uh, that was a nice formation. We'd see, we've seen that a couple of times tonight. They had twins right and twins left with one back blocking for the quarterback. They did a little crossing route with the right side twins and Bevel came from the outside straight over the middle and that was one he dropped earlier there at the end of the second or at the end of the first quarter but he caught that one turned it up uh, right up the middle picked up a few yards that's yeah. first first down of the night first one 16 yard pass reception for Bevel ball to the uh, 36 yard line I set in the back or excuse me a, a shotgun formation pass far side is going to be in and out of the hands of Josh way yeah. Ryan Alberhansky back to defend very same play as as the first down play Kelly except that time they threw to the out route instead of bevel coming over the inside and uh, good job of defense ball just over the 35 at the 36 again uh, uh, East High won the sophomore game 20 to 6 the City High sophomores now three and five on the year that was only the second win in eight games for one of the East in the sophomore game but the varsity game bit different here it's 42 to nothing the 35 point rule does not take effect until the third quarter which is something that the I believe the Iowa High School Athletic Association should look at and, uh, and, and institute it in the first period or first half as well. Here's Stevenson, double pumps, pass is caught on the 35-yard line. That's Anthony Weekly spins. Uh, with all of that action, he's only going to pick up about a yard to the 37. Uh, nice job of Ryan Alberhaski. That's his uh, second straight tackle. That's his second straight tackle. Yeah. They're picking on him over in that left side there, but uh, I tell you what, he's made two good tackles. That was a real good tackle, open field tackle. Gain of one as the ball will be placed at the 37-yard line. Here is uh, C.J. Cruzmark into the game as a receiver. Normally he's been doing all the punting and uh, he's just uh, been worn out tonight uh, doing all that punting. They've punted every time they had the ball except the uh, two interceptions. So they haven't uh, had much of an opportunity to get that offense going. And now we have a whistle and we have a delay of game. 
Ball back down to the 32-yard line. You know, Kelly, when you're in a losing streak like this, these are the kinds of things that happen to you. You're trying to come up with some kind of an offense that moves the ball. You're, you're overthinking. You're trying to do way too much as a coach to come up with a play that works. Kids are trying to come up with things to work, you know, and you take too much time, so there's delay of games and the kinds of penalties that you're seeing on the football field right now. Well, the Friday night lights are burning, but uh, they're burning on City High's uh, side of the field. It's 42 to nothing. Little Hawks over one of the weeks. Twins to the top, twins to the bottom. Each time looking at third down and long. Stevenson, the quarterback, lets loose of one, and it is caught at the 45, despite an effort to buy the uh, defense uh, by uh, City High, number 34, uh, John McCarthy. It was still caught by Kwame Bevel. That actually was pretty good defense by McCarthy, Kelly. He uh, uh, Bevel just jumped up over the top of McCarthy and caught the football. It was not a, a very well-thrown ball because both of them had to stop, slow down, turn around to catch it. But Bevel did a nice job. That's only three pass receptions for East tonight, and they've got something going. They're in City High territory at the 43-yard line with 9.20 left to play until halftime. KCJJ, Iowa City, your station. I set in the backfield. Toss goes to Crawford. Crawford is caught and brought down. Flag is thrown as he is tackled by the uh, Little Hawks. And the flag's right there at the 46-yard line. Looks that it's in the area of holding, I would say, Kelly, on, on, uh, East, yeah, on East Waterloo. I'll tell you what, uh, I really like what I see in City High's defense, Kelly. They swarm to the ball so well. They've got such good athletes on the defensive side. They run so well. And there's, you see, uh, oh, guys, when that ball carrier uh, gets any kind of room at all, you see that hole close up quick with white shirts and red helmets just about as fast, fast as it opens up. But they're doing a nice job of swarming to the football. Well, the uh, penalty is going to be declined. Uh, City High would rather take the down than the penalty. It's second down, 14 yards to go to the 48-yard line. Split uh, receivers to each side. Here comes the quarterback passing, and it's up for grabs, but it's caught again by East. Inside the 25, this time it's Tim Klinghammer who gets it at the 20-yard line. We're, we're, we're seeing two things here, I think, that are really making a difference. Number one, we're seeing a, uh, why that Anybody that's going from our right to our left is having success offensively because of the win, uh -huh. especially throwing the football. And secondly, East has really found a formation they like. They're going with that twins right, twins left. That time they did a down out down with the inside guy on, on our side here. And he just took off down the sideline and he got he got open on the outside. They're doing the same thing here as Stevenson goes back to pass. Goes far side, it's caught. Nice catch, had to go behind him. Uh, does uh, Bevy, uh, or uh, Kwame Bevel and uh, makes the catch at the 16 yard line. Yeah, they're just, I'll tell you what, they're running the same play just about every time. The outside guy does a quick slant or a post route. The inside guy does a, uh, just the opposite. He comes to the outside. Now sometimes they come to the outside and catch the ball. Sometimes they come to the outside and turn it upfield down the sideline but they're pretty much running the same play again. Here it is also again. Here's the uh, quarterback going to the near side. Now he's going to go to the far side. He's being pursued by the defense. He is going to run it himself, and he is going to go out of bounds and be driven out of bounds all the way to the track uh, to the far side as the uh, tackle is made by Ryan Alberhaski again. Well, that will be at the 15, so that's no gain, maybe a half a yard, and that's it. East is showing us some signs of life here after getting down 42 to nothing early in the second period to the Little Hawks of City High. Well, this is kind of what Coach Sadler said all year long, Kelly. They don't give up. And you can imagine what 16, 17-year-old kids think when it's 42 to nothing in the first half. It'd be real easy to pack it in, but they just don't do that. And, of course, all the old guys at the barbershop tomorrow, we used to lead 42 to nothing at the end of every quarter. Yeah. There's the, the uh, quarterback going back to pass. Throws it kind of off balance, and it's incomplete. That was a kind of, he kind of threw that one from the hip. It didn't look very good at all. I, I, I tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised he just didn't throw that one away because nobody was open. City Iowa did a nice job of coverage downfield. I think you can chalk that up to the coverage. Anthony Weekly brings the play in. He will take the place of uh, Tim Klinghammer. It's 42 to nothing City High with the lead. And after losing two of three games over the past three weeks, uh, City High needed a game like this to, to uh, clinch the conference championship and uh, start to tune themselves up for the upcoming playoffs. You bet. This will be a great way to go home for that last game of the season. Here's Stevenson passing. He's got a man. Touchdown. Anthony Weekly found an opening, and the touchdown pass 15 yards from Ryan Stevenson to Anthony Weekly. 
Nice job, nice, uh, nice series, uh, Kelly. It, just a nice passing series. They found a formation they liked. They had some success with it. They Quarterback got some confidence on that drive, and the receivers were catching the football, and what a difference that makes. Yes, it does. That uh, drive went uh, uh, 76 yards. Uh, pretty impressive for a team that had shown absolutely nothing offensively up until that point. Yeah, you know, psychologically, the win can have such a, uh, uh, plays with your mind. When that when the wind's at your back, it just it's easier to be an offensive football player than it is when that wind's in your face. There's just no two. That's a long run. Yes, it is. Going for two. Here's Stevenson. Looking, looking, throwing the same type of pass into the end zone, and it is incomplete. Well, the two-point conversion, no good. 42-6, City High leads it. We'll be back on 16:30 KCJJ. I get a kick. KBBG thinks everything's interference. No. <clears throat> City High leading at 42 to 6. East going after the two point conversion, coming up empty. Now, CJ Cruzmark will uh, kick off. Well, at halftime, Mark Hansen will be uh, joining us, the principal at City High. There's a bouncer. It wasn't intended to be an onside kick, I'm sure. It goes out of bounds. And uh, East High or City High will take it first and 10 at the 35. This broadcast tonight brought to you in part by uh, more electrical services. And Dick will be naming the electrifying play of the game. There have been a number of plays that you can choose from up to this point. Well, tomorrow the Hawkeyes play at uh, Happy Valley. <laughs> and uh, that will be against uh, Penn State. Boy, what an impressive uh, win last week, huh? Oh, that was, a, <laughs> that, was, that was so enjoyable to watch. I, it was a pleasure to sit in front of my TV. I would have liked to have been down in oh, Kenny, but yeah. it, it's fun to watch. Here's uh, Kenny on the uh, handoff, and Kenny's got some open running room. He's to the 40. He is to the 35. Couple more guys to beat. He's to the 30. He's going to be caught from behind and dropped inside the 20 at the 16-yard line. You know, that's the first time that, uh, that City High has been on their side of the 50-yard line. You know, he'd have about uh, 200 more yards tonight if they would have <laughs> been on their side of the 50 instead of on the East Waterloo side. Is that a 49-yard run, is it? 49-yard uh, run for uh, Kenny. And that might be one of the few times he's touched the ball and didn't score tonight. The second time that he's touched the ball and has not scored. D.P. Eyman on the handoff to Kenny on the trap play. Kenny has to wait for the official to get out of the way, and he bounces inside the 10, and Kenny is to the 5 for another first and 10. That'll be 11 more yards for Kenny. It'll be inside the 5. It'll be first and goal for the Little Hawks. Just like a hot knife through butter, you know? <laughs> He really is running well tonight. Yes. Of course, that 35-point rule does not take effect until the second half. Right now, it's 42 to 6. We have 7:08 left to play. Iman has been alternating with Keaton Jones. Iman is in there now. I set with Davis and Kenny in the backfield. There's the snap. Kenny gets the call. Kenny, excuse me, that's Davis. Davis getting in for the touchdown. A five-yard run for Doring and Davis. He says, "Hey, I want a little bit of this." Evans and, I, and uh, Kenny are uh, taking all of the uh, of uh, the glory, and I want a little bit myself. Mm -hmm. That was a nice run. That is a 65-yard drive, Dick, in four plays. And uh, City High, and I know we're kind of sounding ho hummish at the, the present time, but it's 48-6. Kind of hard not to feel that way. As ready to uh, kick the PAT is uh, Andrew Shutt. He has had a busy uh, night here, but uh, apparently somebody lined up offside. He's going to have to, well, he'll either have to move back a bit, or he'll get a little uh, shorter uh, look at it. The uh, uh, play apparently is going to be against the yes yeah. there's going to be an extra five yards for them this broadcast tonight brought to you by the high v food stores and we make another trip to iowa city regina next week pekin regina does not play this week this is their off week that they would have had bgm but they dropped football so there's an opening uh, there in the schedule here's the pat it's up that pat is good folks and it's 49 6 city high with the lead we'll be back on 1630 kcjj should have brought two of these score sheets. Is, is Dorian Davis, is that uh, the younger brother of the I need talent? two of these. The one that's had uh, no, no relation? Yeah. Get back, devil.
Yeah, because of the wind, Andrew Shunt is going to have his uh, kick uh, returned, this time across the 30. And finally, uh, uh, Michael McCoo does go down, but not until he gets to the 32-yard line. They're getting some pretty good field position this time They around. sure are. I was just going to say that. He's over the 30-yard line. He has good field position. And it's 49 to 6. Now, under normal conditions, the 35-point rule would be in effect, but they don't do that till the second half. We still have 649 I left to play that. in the I second period. All at the 32-yard line. Here comes the center, David Hacker. Comes over the ball. He has to snap it in shotgun formation to Ryan Stevenson. Twins to the top, twins to the bottom. Stevenson looks far side to this caught by Bevel at the 40. Bevel shakes loose of one tackler, dives forward, gets close to the first down marker at the 42-yard line. Yeah, I'll tell you what, City High is really conscious of the deep routes right now. The cornerbacks on both sides, Kelly, and they're playing, playing back off right now. And... Uh, all uh, Bevel did that time was just hitch up at about seven or eight yards, and he hit him right on the numbers. Well, that was a pretty good move, moving Bevel from quarterback to receiver. He has uh, gotten himself some pretty nice catches tonight. What's he got, four or five? Well, let's see. Uh, he's got, he has uh, four, four catches so far. Some pretty good ones, too. Stevenson to the near side. Pass is caught yeah. by Crawford. Crawford at the 40. Oh, nice move. Gets inside the 50 and is dropped down across the 50-yard line with the uh, tackle made by uh, Eric Mitchell at the 48. Yeah. Okay. Again, the, the corners are back way off. They're they're lined up off the uh, off the line of scrimmage about uh, guys that looks like they're 8, eight yards off, 8, 10 yards off, and they're back as soon as the ball snaps. So they're just hitching up about 7 or 8 yards and uh, making some good plays right now. Seen a lot of uh, new faces on the defensive side of the ball right now for uh, City High. So Coach Sabres has uh, substituted freely. We have 6.19 left to play in the first half. They have to uh, measure, and it's going to be short of a first down. And so it will be second down and short yardage to go. Again, uh, Mark Hansen is going to be joining us. He is the principal at the uh, City High School, and uh, we have to give him a hard time. He's sitting on the uh, home team's uh, side of the, uh, of the stadium. Oh, I think he's doing that for his dad. His dad's sitting over here, and he probably they don't get a whole lot of chance to talk uh, to talk family stuff. Ah, so did, sitting over here, in fact, in front of the press box so we can be close to us for halftime. Here's the pass that is caught. Like clean hammer inside the 30-yard line. Stays on his feet. Gang tackle. These guys showing some signs of life. It's first and 10 at the 26. They're showing a nice passing game right now, Kelly. I'm impressed. See, High's got to tighten up in the secondary. These are uh, some guys that are new uh, as far as uh, having not played much tonight. A lot of different people in there. Uh, Jake Henniger is there as a defensive back. But uh, those guys have to learn as well, and uh, they're getting some valuable playing time now. Of 49-6 to six with 5.56 left to go till halftime. Stevenson looking for a receiver pass uh, short. It was intended for Anthony Weekly, and it falls incomplete. He uh, actually throws the ball better when he's throwing downfield. Those short routes, uh, he, several times now, he's thrown behind and underneath. Well, the first period was all East High uh, punting and uh, City High scoring. Uh, City High scored the first three, four, five times that uh, the Little Hawks had the ball, and then they threw an interception. So I don't believe they punted yet because they have scored then the last two times that they have had the ball. So they've uh, got one turnover and uh, all the rest of them in touchdowns. Here's Stevenson, low snap, gets the ball, fires near side, and it's caught again at the 15, and again it's Kwame Bevel, and Bevel's to the 10-yard line, Dick, and he has another first and 10. Wow, he's yes. fun to watch. Yes, he is. I'll tell you, and the quarterback's getting the ball to him. The, the linebacker on that side, he's either linebacker strong safety, I'm not sure, actually got between the quarterback and Bevel that time, and uh, he had to throw it high enough to get it over the top of him, and it did. Ball at the nine yard line. It is first and goal for East, trailing at 49 to six. Two sitting high trips to the top of the formation. Bevel to the short side of the field. Stevenson looks down the middle and it is caught by Way. Way at the five yard oh, line. Face Spins. Mask. Yep, there is a face mask there and he's going to be dropped at the three yard line. That's Josh Way who found a way to uh, catch that one and get to the three. He, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, that time he faked over to here to the left side to Be Bevel, pump fake, and then uh, did a nice job of drawing the defense that way a little bit, and then uh, hit him over the middle. That was a nice throw. So that will move the ball to about the two, just inside the two. It'll be a seven-yard gain after the uh, face mask penalty against City High. 
Little Hawks trying to shore up the defense here is for the uh, second possession in a row. East High has uh, really driven the ball downfield. This would be uh, one, two, three, four, seven, the eighth play of this drive. And they've uh, chewed up a little time. 5.22 left to play in the second period. 49-6, to six, City High with the lead. Again, trips with one receiver to the bottom of the formation. Stevenson rolls to the far side, passes, and it is going to be caught by Mark Crawford. Mark Crawford. Mark Crawford got it, a two-yard touchdown pass, and uh, the East High Trojans are on the board again. So Mark Crawford, uh, everybody is looking to the right side, including me, and all of a sudden he squirts and gets loose on the left side, and uh, the quarterback Stevenson hit him. Yeah, he was in that trips, uh, trips formation out on the right side. He just came right straight down the, the uh, goal line, it's about as hard as he could go, ran away from the defender, and, and the quarterback hit him right in the numbers. Fourth touchdown of the uh, second uh, period, uh, two now for East. Going and, for two. Yep, they are at the end as the uh, quarterback Stevenson sets up in a shotgun formation, gets the snap. Rolls looking for a receiver, and it is in complete and a flag. They're going to have a, a pass interference. I thought uh, the receiver slipped, but they're saying that the uh, def defensive back pulled him down. But uh, they, I'll tell you what they're talking about, and I don't know if they'll reverse that or not, but the officials are talking. Well, we'll wait and see if they call the penalty, and uh, yep, they're going to call pass yeah. interference against City High. Well, that'll give uh, East the ball at the one and a half yard line, and they'll try the two point conversion again. Well, it was in yeah. the far corner. Looked we like uh, couldn't slipped. see. I, yeah, I thought he did. Kelly Neff along with Dick Miller, KCJJ, Iowa City. We uh, started on a pretty decent time. It's uh, 9 o'clock, and uh, we st still have five minutes to go in this uh, second period. It takes a while to score uh, what's... Uh, well, they got... I'm just wondering how City High got 55 points on the board, but uh, I'm not sure how they got that, but... Uh, the scoreboard says, I guess when you score after a certain point, maybe both teams get credit for it. Here's the Stevenson uh, PAT attempt as he gets it off to Crawford. Crawford in for the two-point conversion. 49-14, City High has the lead on 1630 KCJJ. Brent, 49-14. A little bit. What time did you leave today? What's his name? Says, how come they didn't get up early? What's his name? Uh, concession guy. I'll tell you what. So East is scoring on his last two possessions, and uh, the ball again is kicked out of bounds. So City High will take it first and ten on the 35-yard line. Well, so far this year, 49 points or more have been scored against East three different times. Uh, 49 by Water of the West, 54 by Lindmar, 55 by Dubuque Senior. And City High is going to uh, score at least, uh, well, they've got 49 already, so uh, I got a feeling their scoring is not over yet. You East know, having a little trouble giving up points. Starting to substitute a lot, Kelly. I, we'll see a lot of you know, City High football players, I think, probably from here on out. But that's good experience for them. They need to do that. Because yeah, they're going to make the playoffs, and you never know when somebody's going to have to uh, step in. What's that saying? The next man in? Yep. There's a pass in there, intercepted, and then tackled at the 47-yard line. Anthony Weekly stepped in front of that D.P. Iman pass, and uh, they intercepted it at the 47. I thought maybe there might have been a face mask there, too. But this first and 10 east at the 47. City High getting a little sloppy right now. Ball at the 47 yard line east with a little bit of momentum. You ever notice how, how, how loud it gets in the press box when East High <laughs> does something? <laughs> it gets pretty loud up here, doesn't it? Another reason why I wanted to have the window open. KCJJ Iowa City here station. Ball at the 47. Here comes the uh, quarterback, uh, Ryan Stevenson, in shotgun. Low snap. Gets it. Pumps once, pumps twice, and is sacked. Coming in to get him, being the first man, is Nico Batembe as the part of the first string is back there, and they drop him back at the 41-yard line. Nico's playing a good defensive football game, Kelly. He's had several uh, several hurries, and he's uh, that's that might be his second sack, I believe, in the in the first half. They mark it at the 43 and not the 41, so that's a loss of 10 yards. That's second down and 20 yards to go. East right in front of us, going from our right to our left. Twins to the top, twins to the bottom. Uh, flanked off to his right uh, is a uh, 
A running back for the quarterback, Ryan Stevenson, who fires into a crowd, and it is caught at the 48-yard line. He just kind of threaded the needle that time, but he found uh, Josh Way open. That will be a pickup of, uh, well, it's going to be a pickup of just a few. Yeah, he curled up at about two or three yards in, in front of the D-back. D-back could, only could go through him, and, of course, he can't do that till the ball gets there. So did all he could do, and he did a good job of that. And it's third down, 15 yards to go. On the short side of the field, you have twin receivers with single coverage for City High. Here comes the center, uh, David Hacker. There's the snap, slipping a Stevenson. He lets loose of it anyway, and it is incomplete. Boy, his back foot, he couldn't dig it any kind of traction. There's back foot just slipped right from out, sure out from did. under. Not a very well thrown ball. That, that was uh, thrown up for grabs, but nobody could get to it. Back defending, Phil Kenny, but he's unable to uh, get to it. City High leading at 49-14, 3.48 left to play in this period. Now for the first time in the second period, East High is going to have to punt. Mm. Got they the punted, win this time. Uh, yep. The punter's not going to know how to handle this. They punted five times in the first quarter alone. This is C.J. Cruzmart. Well, this is their third possession of the uh, second period, and the uh, first time that they uh, first time that they haven't scored. Here comes the uh, punt at about the 40-yard line. There's the snap. Cling Hammer's punt is a good one. Holy cow, that thing's going to go back, 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 back. It's going to bounce to the five and into the end zone. Boy, that win makes a difference, doesn't it? Mm, makes a big difference. First and 10 on the 20 yard line. So, quickly uh, tell us, uh, you knew Mark Hansen uh, when you were both uh, in the Waterloo School System. Mark uh, Mark was the tennis coach at West High when I was uh, coaching football and track at West High. And uh, also he was an English teacher at the time and then became a vice principal at West High and a very, very good teacher. Uh, he was known for being a very good teacher and then of course he became a very good vice principal. And uh, went to Burlington to become principal. Now he's at uh, City High, one of the larger cities obviously in the state of Iowa. And uh, we'll talk to him about some administrative things and things that are going on with the Little Hawks in all aspects of uh, high school life. Ball at the 20 yard line as the uh, City High Little Hawks uh, come out again, first and 10. Last time Iman touched the ball through an interception, but didn't get burned on it because East had to punt the ball away. Iman, near side pass comes to Brent Chen. Brent Chen has it at the 30. Does a little stutter stamp and gets his first and 10. Tackled at the 34 yard line. Good throw, good catch, good run. Brent Jen, senior wide receiver, gets City High. It's 12th first down of the ball game. Well, next week, uh, City High will uh, be at home against Cedar Rapids, Washington. West will close out its season. What a really, what a, despite the fact they're going to have a losing record, what a fun season it was for West. With some pretty, pretty tough opponents on their schedule. They'll close out the year at Cedar Rapids Xavier. Here comes the quarterback, Iman, scrambling. He gets loose, throws it uh, to one of the East High assistant coaches. I think that's Ed Madlock, almost made a catch. He hasn't made a football catch on the sidelines or in a game for 15 years. That's all right. <laughs> I've known Ed for a long time. He was my nephew's uh, coach when he uh, played at Waterloo Columbus. Ed, Ed, Ed could get up pretty good, though. Ed actually played for me, Kelly, at West High. Ran track, played football for me. He, he never could jump, could he? Never could jump. <laughs> well, uh, we just saw that. Don't <laughs> right know the, what the deal was there. <laughs> right on the sideline. Ball was thrown right to it. Second down, 10. 3-14 left to play. Second period, 49-14. City high with the lead. Iman at the quarterback spot. Passes far side. It is caught by Doring and Davis. He's at the 40. He's at the 45. He turns his back and starts running backwards. Picks up the first down at the 48-yard line. That's fourth, uh, first down number 13 on the night for Dan Sabres Club. And with the ball at the 48, it's a pickup of 14 yards. This broadcast today brought to you in part by Rick's Grill and Spirits. City, well, City I needs to get momentum back going into the halftime. I know it's a big score and all that kind of thing, but it's just good for their mental stability to go in at halftime knowing they had a nice... Nice drive here at the end of the half. Well, looks like they're having it. Yes, they are. Kenny uh, breaks through again. Kenny gets inside the 30-yard uh, line. Kenny, who just holding. seems to never get touched until the end. Got a holding flag, I think. Uh, right here. Well, before we give him, yep, it's going to be holding against City High. So that uh, that run of uh, 10, 23, 25 yards will not count. Kenny, uh, not even the leading rusher in the uh, conference. Get from uh, Roan from uh, Washington. A leading rush. Well, this conference has some good facts, don't you know, they? The, I read an article on that someplace, one of the newspapers, local newspapers, and I think there's six backs in the conference that are, have a thousand yards. Wow. 
and uh, they that's unheard of they there hasn't been that for a long time in the in the mississippi valley kenny isn't one of them he has uh 700 800 uh, well according to this it's 600 but i think it's more than that i think this is a week uh, old he has well over 700 there's yeah. the handoff over the 40 as uh, he's only going to pick up a couple of yards there the ball was back to the 38 yard line and uh, now goes to the 42. he might be he might be at a thousand before this night's over however well, uh, Travis Roan, uh, well, yeah, this has to be uh, way old because they only list him with 957 yards. That yeah. obviously is not uh, not correct. And uh, they don't have anybody from Cedar Falls on there. And I think we can just throw that away. <laughs> There's nobody from Cedar Falls even listed. And they had some of the leading rushers and receivers of the entire conference. Here's D.P. Eyman on this. Rough, only a yard on the play to the 43-yard line. Well, that'll bring up third down and long at City High with a minute and 53 seconds left to go until halftime. See Mark Hansen uh, getting ready to uh, come up and uh, and talk with us. East calls a timeout in the first half. Kelly Neff along with uh, Dick Miller. You think this game was in the Unidome as late as it is? Here's the uh, kick, and There's that one's going to sail. That's, yeah, it's going to be taken by Crawford. Nope, he's going to let it go. And it's going to go sideways and be down to... 